Hey what's up everybody, Trofinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. We are back after a long hiatus. I really had to figure out how to start making Gwent videos now that the game has been shut down on consoles and I hope you appreciate the new format. I played around a lot with the new cards from the Merchants of Ophir and have a lot of new ideas. So starting this week, I'm going to restart the Gwent Edge series, meaning you'll get one of these every week with some exceptions of course. Our first deck guide of the new year revolves around Northern Realms in a little deck I call the Shield Siege deck. As always you can see the deck composition right here or in the description down below. But let's have a little chat about what makes this deck tick. The Shield Siege deck is basically a souped up version of the Shield Up deck from a few months ago. While that deck is also still viable for the most part, the new cards added in Merchants of Ophir actually gave us a whole new toolset I'll be showcasing in today's deck. But first, our leading ability. We're going with Pincer Maneuver again for this deck since it's still by far the best ability for the Northern Realms deck. The ability to play two cards of your choice in one turn is perfect for setting up the combos present in this deck or to safeguard some of your engines with a Defender. It is so powerful, I'm guessing it will eventually be nerfed somehow, because every time an interesting engine card is added to Northern Realms, any drawbacks it might have can be easily mitigated with Pincer Maneuver. Pair that with the ability to also pull any card from your deck and we get a dangerous and consistent cocktail. It's just so overpowered compared to what other factions can do. Scoriatel have the closest thing with Call of Harmony, but even that has a potential provision limit. Nilfgaard has tactical decision, but can only choose from the top 3 cards in your deck. All the other factions don't have an ability like this, pulling select units from your deck, so either those need to be added or we'll see an adjustment somehow. That's my thought at least. But enough about the leading ability, let's dive into the deck. This deck has two main teams. Shields complemented with some basic charge based cards. Let's start with shields since those ideally factor into your first round every match. Your main goal in the first round is to set up a lot of shield based units and then wipe out the shields with King Rögner. Since Rögner doesn't see a lot of play, this setup often works like a charm since your opponent will most likely not want to spend precious damage on taking out shields. Get Wenny Cavalry and the new Immortals add to this even more since both of them gain 2 power when their shields are removed, with the latter even regenerating that shield at the end of your turn. The Immortal Cavalry even gives you two shielded units in one go, speeding up the setup phase quite a bit. Once you have around 3 to 5 shielded units on the field, you can pop Rögner for 3 extra points per shield removed, which can stack up nicely with the extra points from the Kedweni Cavalry and the Immortals. For example, two Kedweni Cavalry units and an Immortal Cavalry duo nets you 20 points in one move, more if your opponent has any active shields so leave those shields alone as well. In most cases this will instantly put you in a sizable lead since your initial point total wasn't that high, so your opponent will most likely not overplay as well. The only hard counters to this are frequent damage dealer decks, specifically Skellige decks. But even against those decks you stand a good chance. That's where Pincer Maneuver comes in. If you win round 1 you have the advantage and the choice is up to you. If you feel confident you can push round 2, and I'll explain the powerful second tactic in this deck in a minute, but otherwise you can just pass and move to round 3 with equal cards. But what if you lose round 1? Again, we have two options. Either your opponent passes and you can play Vandergrift, who has a shield and resilience and will therefore move to round 3 for a free 5 points and an extra shield. Shields are not removed from resilience units when they move to the next round, unlike for example armor. If your opponent doesn't pass and tries to push round 2, you can move ahead with the pincer maneuver tactic I'll explain in a minute. If you try and save an immortal cavalry and a war elephant, you can combo both of them in the final round into a 22 point slammer on top of whatever your final card is. But what about pincer maneuver then? Pincer maneuver is, as we said before, ideal for setting up insane engine loops. You usually want to start off with Donimir of Troy on the ranged row since he defends the entire row and combine him with Visigota. Play Visigota first if you can, so you get two charges immediately. Visigota can boost the unit by one and gains an extra charge whenever a unit is played, even your opponent's side, so he's your main buffer. The next card you want to play is Dandelion, since he boosts the unit whenever it gains charges by the amount of charges gained. 
It sets up a nice loop where Visigota gets boosted automatically and is therefore better protected as well. Once that is set up, you're good to go. Priscilla is perfect to double up on charges and boosts, and she can even be used immediately if you put it on the melee row and boost it with Visigota, providing him with two more charges every turn in the process as well. Shani is even better at providing protection, giving out armor and vitality depending on her power. Once she is on the field, you should prioritize giving extra charges to her, since she's more efficient than Visigota and he gets free charges anyway. On the offensive front, you should use Visigurd later, since he gains charges based on the amount of boosted allies. With Visigota, everyone should be boosted, so no problems there, and with Dandelion, he'll get a power boost by the same amount as well. The Redanian Archer is also a very nice damage dealer, gaining charges automatically while he has armor. You can keep this up with Shani in case he loses that armor, and if you still have Rugner, you can even go shield crazy on top of all of this, if you combine him with Prophet Libioda. As with our original shield up deck, Libioda provides a shield to any unit played next to him. If you keep this up for a few rounds with Donimir as a protector, you can rack up an insane amount of points with Rugner. It's a great backup strat in case something happens to your other charge based units, and with both of these in your toolset, you have a pretty good chance of winning that last round. The only real counter to this deck is, as I said, Skellige. Stunning Blow can easily take out Donimir with some extra damage, or Grammist can purify the Fender away, which leaves Visigota wide open if he hasn't been boosted enough yet. Svalblot can also make quick work of some of the insanely boosted units on your side, so keeping Donimir up and running is key in that case. Otherwise, I'm having a really nice time winning with this deck. It's similar to our original Shield Up deck, but I feel like it has an identity of its own with the addition of the Immortals, Shani and the War Elephant. And if I might say so myself, it's really viable in ranked as well. Even the Kedwenny Cavalry had a different ability back then with the Shield Up deck, and the Damned Sorceress synergizes with them nicely as well, allowing you to remove the shield and gain double the benefit with a new ability. But that's it for today, what do you think about the Shield Siege deck? Got any other ideas on how to improve it or any new ways to outthink your opponent? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. That's what we're here for after all. Any feedback is greatly appreciated and you can check me out on Twitter at at Trophynut, that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwentech. Goodbye and thanks for watching.